It's day 246 2016 and today we have news of Samsung recalling the Galaxy Note 7, Google killing of Project Ara and the Nexus brand and a new phone with two Snapdragon processors. This and more in today's phone arena daily. Let's begin. As of September 1st, 2016, there have been 35 reported cases of the battery exploding inside the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. This has been a pattern that has been noted by Samsung and what they are doing now is they are recalling all the Note 7 units so that they can prevent further damage to their image and reputation of course of quality and quality control. So they are recalling all the million units of Note 7 that they have sold till now. They are stopping the sales right now and they will be releasing the newer batches of the phones which are devoid of this problem. So the Samsung batteries come from their own subsidiary company and they have now ordered for a newer battery to be replaced inside the Note 7. So that's right now happening. If you have already got the Note 7, let us know what your experience is like. Amidst all the mid-range announcements coming out from IFA, there is an announcement that definitely raises your eyebrows and it's quite explosive, the spec sheet at least. This is the Turing phone Cadenza. As you can see, it's a very mysterious phone from a mysterious company known as the Turing Robotics Industries and this is a very new company that aims to exploit the status quo that is currently prevailing in the smartphone market. So this phone will have two Snapdragon 830 processors reportedly and of course you can see the spec sheet which is completely crazy apart from the lone fact that only doable thing is a 5.8 inch Quad HD screen. That's the only prevalent thing in the spec sheet. Rest of the things are completely crazy. You can see a 60 megapixel camera at the back with a four sensor configuration and a triple lens and a 20 megapixel dual lens camera at the front. It all sounds a bit crazy and overall you can see the spec sheet here. It's very futuristic and it's slated to release in 2017 and the phone is not completely revealed. So let's hope this doesn't get into the vaporware territory and actually makes it. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not, but we'll wait and watch till 2017 for this Turing phone. Google has reportedly axed the Project Ara modular smartphone project, which is a bummer because it just recently got refreshed and had a base configuration recently. But Google might think that it's not going to take off and there is a clear reason why, which we'll talk about at the end. But this Project Ara smartphone initially started out at Motorola, which was acquired by Google. And then this project went into ATAP, Advanced Research, and then now it has been axed, reportedly according to new reports from Reuters. So the reason that has been stated is that they are consolidating their hardware division now under Motorola's ex-CEO, Rick Osterlo. So that's happening now and on the same lines, Google is also killing off the Nexus branding and apparently the new Nexus smartphones which were believed to be Marlin and Sailfish are going to be called Pixel and Pixel XL which is kind of weird but Pixel branding will be the hardware division's code name as of now and as of the new reports. So that's kind of the bummer news from Google but let's hope to see this new hardware division taking up new designs and new innovation. Following Apple and Samsung, Xiaomi now has its own mobile payment solution and of course it's called Mi Pay. Now this is what it looks like and it's in partnership with China Union Pay. It's just kind of like a large network of banks and payment solutions in China and this has allowed Xiaomi to target debit cards from 20 banks and credit cards from 12 banks and also with transportation departments so they can use the public transport passes using Mi Pay. So that's kind of a big deal for Xiaomi in China at least and it uses the NFC system and also the fingerprint sensor on the Mi Fi to validate all the transactions. It can be linked directly to the bank cards and the bank cards can be used with the payment solutions. So that's happening in China right now. Let's hope it crosses borders and comes to other countries including India as well and around this is the point of discussion today. As of now, which has been the best mobile payment solution you have used in India? Let us know what you think in the comment section below and suggestions on how it can improve. And that's about it for today's show. Do check out the deal of the day in the link in the description and all the stories as well. The IFA coverage is going strong. So check out all the hands-ons and photo galleries of all the new devices in our blog and as well as on the YouTube channel. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later with more technology news.